To write the name for FeOH3, the first thing we need to recognize is this OH here. When it's bonded to a metal, this is called the hydroxide ion. We have three hydroxide ions, so that's a polyatomic ion. Then iron, that's the metal, and it's actually a transition metal, so we'll need to account for that when we write the name. So because of this, we're going to use these rules here to write the name for FeOH3. First, we're going to write the name for the metal. That's Fe, which is just iron. Then we write the name for the polyatomic ion. That's OH. It's called the hydroxide ion. It's really one you should remember. So right now, for FeOH3, we're calling it iron hydroxide. But we said Fe, iron, that's a transition metal. And it can have a different ionic charge depending on what it's bonded to. Right now, it's bonded to three hydroxide ions. And each hydroxide, the whole thing, is 1 minus. So we have a total charge of 3 times 1 minus 3 minus. The iron has to be 3 plus for the net charge to be 0. So because of this 3 plus, this iron 3 ion, we write a Roman numeral 3 in parentheses, and the 3 is for the 3 plus. So FeOH3 is called iron 3 hydroxide. If you were given this formula and asked to write the name, you'd know that iron has a 3 plus ionic charge and that you'll need three of these 1 minus hydroxide ions to balance the charge. This is Dr. B with the name for FeOH3, iron 3 hydroxide. Thanks for watching.